Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And this is the series I'm putting together where we are doing a space station transfer going from the ISS over to this uh, Station 5. And this, uh, this is the mission where it was made complicated by the fact that we were so far out of plane with Station 5 that we uh, couldn't do a direct plane change in low Earth orbit. Um, and we looked at some different options that we had in the first couple of videos. And ultimately we decided that raising our apoapsis way out into space and then coming back down uh, well raising our apoapsis way out into space aligning our plane at a hundred thousand kilometers and then coming back down and circularizing around earth for the rendezvous with the uh, station five was the plan that we decided to go with let's go ahead and switch camera views here and jump back into things okay so in the last uh, video we completed we completed the plane alignment, got back down to Earth, and did our circularization burn. After everything was said and done, we had 2,948 meters per second of velocity remaining. And if we take a look at our calculation, uh, we were bang on. I mean, we were really close. Uh, this is much closer than I expected us to be. So we started off with a budget of 9,111 meters, and we, these are the estimated costs that we had uh, based purely, you know, on calculate, based purely on orbital calculations, and we estimated that by the time we were at this point, we would have a remainder of 2,958.4 meters per second. 2,958.4, and what we actually have remaining is 2,948. So we we our calculation was only off by 10 delta v. That is crazy accurate so that means we now have close to 3000 delta v to set up our rendezvous and do our docking so no problem at all i think this will be a piece of cake now we are on we are slightly above station five and we are uh, practically on the other side of the planet so it is going to catch up to us but it's going to take a while. So before we try to set up any kind of maneuver, uh, we're gonna have to let time pass. The only thing I'm a little worried about is locks. Let me check my Delta V, uh, my locks. I have 12 days, eight hours remaining. We should be fine, should be fine. So let's go ahead and continue on. Um, and we'll just try to keep an eye on, uh, we'll just try to keep an eye on time. So we're at 51,986. So we have until 51, what would that be, 998. So as long as we don't go past that, we should be fine. So uh, let's warp time forward until we're, um, you know, much closer, until the Station 5 is much closer to us. So we're going to go pretty fast here on the time warp. So now we're about exactly halfway across, and we're good on time, locks-wise. And it's catching up to us. We'll let it get reasonably close. Definitely don't want it to overshoot us. That would be a disaster. A little bit more. Let's start setting up our plan now. Now, since I've been trying to get re-familiarized with uh, IMFD, I'm going to start with IMFD and see how things go. If it turns out to be too cumbersome, I'll go ahead and use TransX. All right, let's go to menu. Let's check our configuration again. So nodal regression is no. Mission timers MJD, we're good there. Let's go to the course program. Let's go previous. Let's go plus here to get out of that program. And we want target intercept set target the station five and so the first thing I'm going to do is go to the TIN the time to intercept and set that up now I didn't do any calculations for what it should cost to do this intercept but we're only a difference of 100 kilometers so this should be really cheap I'm thinking I'm, I'm gonna guess this to be so when we went when we did this with the ISS, it was about 80 meters per second, somewhere between like 80 and 90 meters. I think it'll be even cheaper than that. So, but that gives me something to, to a base, a base point, a baseline. 
So let's move this out. And I saw that jump, so let's go down to one, go back, find that low point. At least I thought I saw a low point. Oh, I, I'm not quite sure why it's doing that. Let's think about this. Let me think here, why is that? Do I need to change one of these? Maybe. I don't remember ever changing that before. So, yeah, unfortunately, even though I just did a video on how to set this up, I'm just not that familiar with this MFD. But I think I think this is in the ballpark, so let's, let's start with that. And now let's go lock our time of flight, for starters, and adjust our variables here a little bit. So that's coming down. We'll just go forward until uh, about right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and unlock and start checking these variables out. That's too much change. So let's go down to one. So that's not helping anything. Let's go back. And I think I saw the low point right around there. So now let's check our eject time. And just based on this hypothetical, I can tell this plan's currently pretty terrible, but hopefully we can fix it up here. Let's see, that's not gonna do it. Okay, the orbit's starting to look a little bit better at least. So 359 to 339. Okay, so we're getting big improvements here. Well, <laughs> took our TEJ all the way down to zero. Okay. Um, so I think what I can do now if I lock... So that means that... I think that means that this time of flight is pretty good. So let me lock it. And now we have to... Obviously we have to advance this forward. So let's go forward until our numbers aren't looking so great anymore. Okay, so we're just going to continue uh, working with our variables here, trying to bring down our... Oops, I have to unpause. Bring down our velocities to something that seems like it would be more reasonable. And again, I think... I just, I think it should be closer to, uh, you know, a total cost of like 80 or something like that. Seems to me like that would make sense. Just based on, you know, doing similar things with the ISS. So we're still going down. And now that's turning around and going, no, it's still going down. But now the IV is going up, so... But the DV is going down. Alright, let me continue to forward until I get the lowest DV. Which was right back there. Around here. And then... Once we, once we dial that in, we'll unlock. I, th I think we're going to be able... I think we'll be able to get this with I with IMFD and the one thing I do like about the IMFD method even though it's a bit more fiddly than Transex if you're if you're it, it puts all the focus on the cost <clears throat> sometimes in Transex I can get kind of blindsided by the closest approach and not pay as much attention to how much I'm actually spending on my encounter velocity or something like that so IMFD, you know, puts the focus on the cost. So that that's that's definitely a good thing. So again, I'm just looking at that DV. I'm gonna go ahead and do a 10 because I don't know how far back it was. So it's going up. So we'll go with that. 
So let's go to here, unlock, and now let's start working with these two variables independently. So that's going up, that's going down. Okay, that's good. So now we'll, right now it's going back up. So yeah, just that's the game back and forth. So I'm going to keep that there for now. Go over here, and that's not helping anything. So we'll go back. That's now going up, that's going up. So we found a little point right. So 77, so right around here was a low point. So let me go over to this variable and forward is not helping, or adding in is not helping, so taking out. All right, let's get out a 1x adjustment. So 2.11.9 total. Now I'm kind of looking at the total a little bit, so that's now going up. All right, I don't feel like, yeah, we're definitely not at the lowest point yet, because I can still see our hypotheticals taking us way out, so we're definitely not there yet. So let me, let me lock, and let's go to 10. So <clears throat> that's bringing down the DV. and the IV, so this is improving things for us. It's a pretty good improvement. 104, so the IV is starting to go up, but the DV is still coming down, so I'm gonna continue going forward until there. Now let's go to 1X. Let's back up and find that lowest point on the DV. Well, actually, you know what? The IV is going up a lot faster, so let's, let's continue forward because that IV is coming down a lot faster than the DV is going up at least for the moment. So I think it's a better, I think it's a good improvement overall. You know, even though we are driving up that DV cost a little bit, but you can see the IV is coming down way faster. So we have a net gain. Let me go ahead and go to 10 because it looks like we're going to be able to get some improvements here. And now actually the DV is going down as well. So now I saw the IV go up. Okay, let me let me start. Let me go. Let me stop there for a moment. Let's unlock and try working with them independently again. So we're at 163. So we're getting in the ballpark, but you know I can still I can tell I can still tell just from the hypothetical that it's not dialed in. So let's see that. Okay, that's helping the IV, that's helping the DV, so this is good. This is a good improvement. So we overshot there. So let's go down to one, and let's dial into that low point. Yeah, very, very uh, clicky. The other thing is that I never did, we, we are a little bit out of plane, I never did take care of that. It probably would be worth correcting that when we get over to the node. Um, that's, let's actually do that. Let's get over here to the ascending node and take care of that last little bit of relative inclination. And then we'll come back here and work with our plan. So. Uh, we just have uh, one and a half second burn time. So let's go, let's get closer to that point. It's going to be anti-normal, so we need to burn down. And it's only one second. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get into the anti-normal position. And turn off that autopilot, save a little bit of fuel here for the next few seconds. We're almost there. I actually forgot that we have this. So lock the autopilot. And we're gonna start to burn a bit early because we're not gonna use the full power of the main. We'll just keep our orbit together a little bit better. All right, that's it. Rotation, translation. Okay, so that takes care of that. Um, now that will have affected our plan, but you know, hopefully it'll be you know, for the best. 
but let's uh, let's continue working here with our stuff and bringing down our numbers. So that's both of them are going up. But if I now let me take out some thirty. Okay. Now let me work with. So we're unlocked. So let me work with TEJ now. So that's helping the DV. So I'll focus just on the DV for now. Actually, but the IV is going up faster, I think. So, so it's not a net gain. So let me find the low point. Let me look at the total. Right now I'm just going to focus on the total and find the low point. But I think we're we're getting fairly close, I think. 1014, so it's going up. Three four. Okay, so right around right around this point. And let's come back to T I N. And what is that doing? That's hurting everything, so we need to go the other way. So I'm going to look at the total again. And again, at any point we want, we can say we're done fiddling. We're just going to fly the plan. But you know, we're trying to we're trying to be efficient, even though we do have an excess of delta v. But I just I don't I don't like to be in such a hurry to fire engines that I fly a plan that I know I can improve significantly. Or you know. When I say significantly, that's a bit relative, of course, but but I think we're basically dialed in. Um, we're just going to go back and forth between these two variables now, but the bulk of the work is done for figuring this out. Now it's just a matter of getting the timings dead on. But I knew that you know we should be able to do this for less than 100 dV because we if we if we can go from 200 kilometers up to about 350 for around 80 dV. You know, then surely we should be able to come down from uh, 21, uh, 2,100 to uh, 2,000 kilometers for around the same price, I would think. And it looks like my assumption was pretty uh, pretty accurate. And I would actually think it would even be a little bit cheaper because we're further out from Earth, so the uh, burns should be a little bit cheaper. So just watching my total. Looks like it bottomed out at that point. Let's come over to TIN. And yeah, we're just going to bounce back and forth, back and forth until until nothing improves anymore. But as you can see, we're pretty much pretty much dialed in. Let me go previous. And something else I remember just barely remember this. But you know how in, tra in Transex, how when we see things happening, <clears throat> sometimes we will overshoot a variable one way or the other. I do remember doing that in uh, IMFD as well. So, for example, since every time I go back and forth between these variables, things are improving, when I'm getting down to the point here where I hit my low point, and then it starts turning around and going up, I believe if I overshoot intentionally... Yeah, look how low this is getting. So we're, you know, we're coming up to the point where it's gonna, yeah. See now it's going up the other way. But let me let me just overshoot intentionally just a little bit, not by a huge amount. Actually, no, it's still going down. Oh, I, I think I see. Yeah, one of my variables is going up. One's going down. But the point I was going to say is that sometimes, you know, when you, if you overshoot in one, if you overcorrect in one direction, then when you go back to your other variable, it makes that other variable come down even faster. There's something happening right at that spot where the numbers just go wonky for a second. But it looks like everything is still getting down. And yeah, we're not, we're under 60 uh, meters per second. So. But uh, let me go ahead and pause for a moment, switch camera views. When we come back, we'll finish this up. We're almost there. I mean, we're at 54 meters per second. So back and forth a couple more times, we'll have it dialed in. And then we're going to do our rendezvous with the Station 5.
Hope you liked the video. Hope you liked the series. Hope you find this interesting, especially with the fuel planning. That's the part that I was always uh, that I always found really fun about Orbiter was doing these calculations, seeing them, uh, you know, get, getting a calculation, then carrying out the mission and comparing what actually happened with what I calculated. And when the two are really close together, it it just makes me really happy. I like I like seeing that you can plan these things out, execute. And then your your actual execution is really close to your plan. So with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and end this part here. And I will see you in the next video.